Good afternoon. Welcome to Hardwood Turning in the Stable Studios. Hope everybody's well and getting some productive work done in the workshops uh, and not having to work too hard. Uh, let me bring in some uh, friends of mine, uh, loosely friends, and I'll call, let's loosely call them friends. <laughs> uh, I'll bring them in here and we'll see who we've got today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have Mark, the gentleman with Turner. And we have Terry from DJ Turning. And uh, most Hello. importantly, we have Joe. Good afternoon. Joe Senior from Joshua Griffin. So good afternoon to you three guys. Get back in the background quickly. There we go. <laughs> and I'll explain what we're going to do today. So we have a little piece of eucalyptus. I'll just pop that on there. This is a little branch piece of eucalyptus. It's about four inches across, well, three and three quarters, and roughly um, seven and a quarter inches long. So we're going to turn a little goblet. Uh, basically, just to show you the process and how it works, um, and some give you some ideas on how you can do it. So I'm going to get this mounted onto the lathe. Wrong end. Put that on there. While you do that, I'll start reading out who's in the chat, shall I? That, that would be good, Mark. Thank you very much. Right, first in was Duncan with <laughs> Curly Turner, followed by Lawrence Pekaja, Clive Rogerson, Chris Dodds, Jared the French Turner, Sits Repurposing, Robert from Hodgepodge Woodworks, uh, Joe Senior, snuck in there. Robert Dolman, <laughs> uh, Ian Leonard, Nick Castle, uh, David Heath, Andy H is for turning, and Seth from Brickhouse Craftworks. Oh, very good. Well, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for coming in to see me today. Um, as I said, this is going to be a goblet. So uh, normally when we uh, wood turners do things, we kind of do it in a row of thirds. So um, to get this started, I'm just going to do a rough basic shape, but I'm going to just going to kind of draw a line on there somewhere. That's about a third. A third and two thirds. So that will give me an idea where I want to start shaping out. But first and foremost, let's get the bark off. And if I just put a little mark on my... Copper Owl would turn in and oh, Jennifer Stratton's in. Oh, hi, Jennifer. So let's get this down around. Turn the speed up. So we're turning Tom, at about a thousand revs now. Tommy's workshop's in. I just glanced over there to make sure that my toolbox is all nicely closed. I made that mistake yesterday, turned the piece and ended up with a full drawer of shavings, <laughs> which wasn't very smart. I'll just stop that because my tool rest moved a little bit there. Put it more central, make sure it's locked in better. How dry is that? Get, when, when you get to the end of the wing of the, the tool rest, there's a lot more pressure going through the tool rest uh, and it can affect the way the, it's held by the little screw. So it's best to try and turn off the middle of it if you can. So how dry is that timber, Brian? This timber would be, uh, it's eucalyptus, by the way. Did I, did I say that? I think I did. Yeah, did. Um, and <laughs> I've, I've had, it came off the tree about six months ago. So it's still quite damp. Is there any nice aroma coming off to get Brian? Nope, nothing. No, it doesn't smell like eucalyptus at all. And, and my experience uh, of the eucalyptus I've turned so far, I have I have never felt smelt the smell of the timber itself. The smells all in the leaves that I could see. Jared the French Turner says 
Funny Brian is using eucalyptus. Just got a call from his brother-in-law. He got me about 20 pieces, about five inches thick, three inches long. Anything special to do to secure it while it dries? Seal the ends with uh, watered-down PVA glue. Yeah, as soon as possible, because it splits like the very double. It's almost as bad as cherry, if not worse than cherry. So it needs to be sealed kind of almost instantly. Order down some PVA glue, 50-50. Paint it on. Nice and thick. Might need two coats. You can see here, I'm just roughing it, I'm just kind of roughing out of shape here, guys, to, to give me an idea of where the cup is. So if I go here. Sorry, Joe, what was that? Chris Glanville, he's, he's, he's coming. Hi, Chris. And we're down the wood turn. Hi, Chris. In as well. Hi, Chris. Chris is the guy I was giving lessons to the other day. Hello, no, Chris. Ah, is that Katie's <laughs> other half? That's Katie's better half, yeah. <laughs> no, other half. Half. Oh, controversial there, Mark. That's a bit controversial. <laughs> oh, he knows he's a few hundred miles away, but one day. So I'm just I'm just roughing out the basic shape of the, the goblet. <clears throat> yes, Gerard, that'll do. If you like. Normally when I mix you the PVA glue, I do a kind of 60-40 kind of mix. But 50-50 will be <clears throat> fine. <clears throat> Gerard says he's got some chestnut end sealer. That, yeah, that's the same. It'll do. Yeah, same thing. But it's just the PVA is cheaper, guys. You can buy PVA glue, five litre tubs, for, for pennies these days. Screw fix, do. I don't know if you have screw fix over in Ireland. We do, yep. We do, yes, we do. Screw fix, do. Uh, um, it's called their basics range or something. Yep. I think it's nine. £9.97 for five litres. There you go. It's uh, cheap as chips, that's what I said. <laughs> so we'll just screw up this end up a little bit so as we can start to hollow that once we get down to that. I'll do. And now I need to put a tenner on, th on this end. I'm just going to stop it for a second first, but and have a look and see where we are. With Still got a little bit of bark there. So we'll just take a little bit more of the bottom end. And go this way. You should try and work from the centre to the end if you can. Right? Yeah, uh, I'm doing it this way because I'm actually cutting downhill here. This, this end was higher than this bit, so I'm cutting down into the grain. Uh, I understand the principle of this, but that that's actually an uphill cut there. Uh, not really on a spindle like that. You're, you're quite parallel there. It's quite parallel now, yeah, but the, this end had a bit of a scoop in it, so that's why I was coming in the way. Uh, and I know that it's easier if you can rub the bevel there and then take it off the end rather than come from the end in. More than anything else, it reduces absolutely the chance right. of the end splitting out. You're absolutely right, Mark. Douglas Mon coming. Hi, so that's, Douglas. That's, that's kind of a basic shape there. And now I'm just going to put a tenner on this. Well, I want to be able to hold it in the chuck. So somewhere about a six mil tenon will be fine. It's not that big a piece, it won't be overhanging that long. That far, should I say. And it was uh, Chris's mum who I made the clock for that I my video was. Oh, all right. Ah, the colours on that clock turned out really well. I have to say, look nice. Thank you. Yeah, they didn't they? So now, I don't want to do a finishing cut or anything on that because I'm going to hollow out the inside first. So next plant, next part of the plant is get the thing into the chuck. So remove the step centre. Try that. 
So I'll just take that step center out and we shall pop this in. So I can always just set it on the bottom jaw and let it come up. And then I'm just going to hold that there so it's just, just held enough, it's not it's not in. Bring your tail stop back up. And I'm going to push it in so as the, the face of the timber meets up with the faces the face of the, the jaws. And then tighten the jaws down. Now it's not too tight, obviously, you can't close the jaws. And that just makes sure you've got a nice square fit. And this Mo Valley makers in. Hi Mo Valley. Hi Mo Valley. Hi, this uh, bit of timber is a bit damp. So we'll give it a good tighten up. And we'll keep an eye on that just to make sure it doesn't get loose. Doug, Doug Miller's in. Good afternoon, Doug. Hi, Doug. Right, so there are various ways we could we could uh, hollow this out. But what I will do is I'll just swing the headstock a little bit um, so as I can see in it. And hopefully you will be able to see in it too. So if I just pop that camera on. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, there. Yeah. Now, there are various ways you could hollow this out, guys. You could start with... Uh, let me just remove the elbow stabber first. You could start with a drill and drill a hole through the middle. You could use your tailstock with a Jacob's chuck in it and drill a hole down through the middle. You could use a handheld drill and drill a hole down through the middle to set your depth or whatever you want. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use my spindle gauge and do a plunge cut. The important thing about a plunge cut is that the tool needs to be parallel to your, uh, your lathe bed and bang on centre. So Douglas Mungham and Wybie Woodshed are in. Hi Douglas and Wybie. Thanks for coming in. So we're going to turn the lathe down to about 500 here. I'd already said Doug. Oh, did you? Are you? No, you said Doug Miller. No, I said Doug Mungham before that. Oh, did you? Sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I said who shall I side with here? Who shall I side with here, Mark? Who do you reckon? Did uh. I or did I not hear you say Doug Miller? <laughs> so I'm just plunging us in. Can't recall it. The, the flute is set oh, to about uh, slightly closed over this way, to and it's pointing towards roughly between um, 10 and 11. And I'm just plunging that in, and I'll bring it back out again when my thumb hits the end of the piece. See how far in we are, that's one inch. Oh, that's brave. Two inches. We'll try that and just check that against the. Uh, go another little bit yet, and then I'll show you guys. Pete Twister Trees has joined us. Hello, Peter. Hi, Hi Pete. Pete. Hi, Pete. Ellie Two Meadows is in. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hi. Ellie Two Meadows. Not a new name. Ellie Two Meadows Designs. No, she's might be she's new to you. She's, been, she's, oh, she, she's been in the chat for quite a while oh. over the last year. Overhead, the camera has just calved, so I'll just try and fix that. Ellie lives about three just miles from me. All right. Welcome, Ellie. I don't think I've seen you in my life before. But you're more than welcome. Change camera. Uh, well, I just tried to change the camera and it's not working. So I'm just trying to see can I get it to reactivate itself. There you go. I just wanted to show you the depth. So we're actually right down to about here now. So that's probably deep enough initially, and we can finish the bottom off when we get in there. So the next cut we're going to use is a pull cut. Change so again, the camera. With the, oh, change the camera again. Let's hope this works now. Look. That's ah, right. cameras, are, cameras are messing about today, guys. All right. They'll stop. Deactivate. Activate. There we go. Sorry about the camera glitch there, guys. So it's a pull cut. We're going to do the same thing, just to set the tool a little bit. And the flute is pointing off to my left at about 10 o'clock. 
and we're just going to bring the tool out towards the edge. Circular wood by Keith's in. Hi Keith. Hi Keith. Hi. So that works a treat. It's almost like sharpening a pencil if you think of that at the pencil sharpening action. Same sort of thing. And it works perfectly well on end grain. It's a very efficient way of back hollowing. Yeah, it's just back hollowing, yeah, that's all that's. Yeah. There's the technical term. I would have just called it taking a risk. <laughs> now, one of the important things I think about backhauling is if you keep the tool at the same angle all the time coming across, you'll catch the bottom wing. So as I'm bringing it across, I'm actually closing the flute. So bring it across, rotate my right, rotate my right hand. That's very noisy. I'll do that up here so you can see it. So we're coming across and then I'm just rotating my hand and closing the flute. So the flute can sit, happily sit there now. It's not, we're, we're no, not doing any cutting. But if I turn my hand clockwise, we can pick up the cut again. Rex B's in. Hi Rex. Hi Rex. So that's how I'm achieving that cut. Hey. We could also use a, car a carbide cutter. I'll just show you that too. The little Simon Hope, this little Simon Hope with a six mil um, cutter on it. Uh, and this little tool is designed perfectly for this job. You've got to be really careful, though, because it is really aggressive. Rex is asking you, he loves the smock. How many do you have? Question mark. Sorry? He loves your smock. How many have you got? I've only got one of this one. This is a, an original, um, uh, designed and manufactured by my sister. <laughs> it's an absolute one-off. Maybe that's a good thing, Paul, some people would say. <laughs> I need to turn my sound up a little bit, I think. Can't really hear you guys. I've brought the knife. I've never gone through the side of a piece, but how how easy would it be to go through the side with that tool? Um, the reason you asked that question, Mark, is because I did it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it is extremely easy, guys. So in order I've, to avoid that... I'm not ever having done it myself, guy. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now so I've just used my spindle, guys. <laughs> go ahead, Joe. I was going to ask, so how thin... Would you um, turn the um, the actual cup at the cup? You, you could turn it as the walls. You could you could turn the walls as thin as you like. You might turn one the other day there, which was paper thin. You could almost see through it. Right. But for a, for a goblet, I'm I'm not going to go any more than about three or four mil here. Gerard's asking if the um, wood is still a bit wet. Will it not crack once the goblet is finished? It, the, not if Brian good... goes that thin, no. Yeah. It'll be thin enough that it'll dry and then stabilise because it's thin. Looks like Pete's just acquired, Pete Twisted Trees has just acquired the Simon Hope Mini Hollower kit and the Pro Hollower, just playing with them now. So I'll take it, he uh, went shopping yesterday. I love them, Pete. So if you haven't got um, hollowing tools, you can do it perfectly well with the with the spindle gauge. <coughs> and so I'm just going to finish this off with the spindle gauge. Yeah, 
Rex, please um, ask him, what happens to the tool when you go through the side? Does it fly <laughs> off? No, uh, no. Normally, if, if you're coming out and you come out through the side here, say, mm -hmm. it just wraps itself around the tool. If, you're, if you've got your tool anchored properly on the tool rest and you've got a, a, a reasonable control of your tool, it'll just spin onto your tool and stop. You'll get a non you'll get a non captive ring. Yeah. So it doesn't come off with any great force and fly anywhere because normally by the time you're getting uh, to to go through the wall it's pretty thin anyway, so there's not much weight in it. We're getting all that noise, that vibration noise, because this tool is nearly too far over. It's over the uh, over the tool rest. Designer make, saying hi, designer make. Hi, designer make. Good afternoon. Thirty-seven. Good afternoon. Thirty-seven, Mark. Yeah. Oh, amazing! Thank you so much, people. Remember, folks, Lovely. if you like what Brian does. Smash that thumbs up. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing to his channel. Press the notification bell so whenever he uploads any content, it shows up on your timeline. Scott, the blue light turn is in. <laughs> <laughs> you hi, 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 Scott. The same thoughts. Hi, so, Scott. I'm just going to give us a quick run of my little scraper now because uh, I find, I don't know about you, you guys, but I find it difficult. Just, just to get the nub off the bottom sometimes. So if you just put your scraper mm. straight in, drop it down a little bit and lift it straight up again, that kind of clears the nub. So basically I'm just this action. That's obviously exaggerated, guys. So just a little bit, just a tiny little movement up and down with the handle. Find the middle. And try and just try and get rid of that little nub that's in the middle. And then bring it out to the side. And that should do. Now, what, what you can also do, Brian, Yep. just give you a little tip here. Get a piece of paper towel, fold it into four. Yep. You're going to have to put the tool rest back. Oh, put the tool rest back. Piece of paper towel, fold it into four. Right, take your scraper. Well, the, the, the way you had it folded was fine. Yeah. Take, take your scraper. scraper. Where is the scraper? I've lost it. Oh, there it is. Take my scraper. Right, what you're going to do is you're going to put the scraper in one-handed, start at the bottom, and you're going to support the upper rim on the outside with the paper towel, just on the ah. side. Just here? Yeah, right up near the rim. Oh, up here. Oh, I yeah, got yeah. you. Oh, just to kind of stop the vibration. Yep. I get you. So just all here the paper from towel it. Does, yeah, all the paper towel does is stops your fingers burning. And then just, what that does is reduces the ripples on the inside edge. There you go. Well, that is a genius tip. Thank you so much for that. I can't uh, take credit for that. That's from Mike Walt. Oh, well, you're getting the credit because you're sitting there telling me it. <laughs> yep, but uh, yeah, I can't imagine Mike would. Yeah, that's made a much better finish of that, I have to say. Excellent. That's a good tip, guys. Hope you've all seen that. Thank you, Mark. It's all right. Now, at this stage... Mike Walt would uh, sand that and seal it. But I'm going to finish the outside first. Just to be different. <laughs> just in case you actually part it off. Just just in case it comes off. And <laughs> just in case it comes off in the heap. I haven't wasted all that time. <laughs> but I'm just going to do a little finishing cut on the outside. Change and camera, mate. Oh, overhead. I bet it doesn't work. See that? I knew it wasn't going to work. I don't know what's wrong with my cameras today. 
Operator error, maybe? No. Nah. Spider. Uh, no, it's not, it's not going to come back at all, guys. We'll just go up to the close up now. Can't now. That's no, fine. No. That's fine. That's fine. So I'm just going to do a finishing cut down the outside here. Clive Rogerson says, when doing that, which I just showed you, I tend to hold the scraper one-handed closer to the steel and have the handle under the forearm. Yes, that's another good way of doing it. That's a good just idea, brace, yeah. brace the handle. Ian in the shed has joined us. Hi, Ian. Oh, yeah. Hello, Ian. I know I'm just putting a little bit of shape into the bottom of the cup. So I'm not going to go too far because I can finish this bit off later. John McDonald, the one-eyed turner, is in. Hi, John. JP Hi, John. Woodworks has just joined. Hi, JP. He says, he says afternoon, Raspberry Brian. Right. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Hi, JP. So just a nice little shortcut there, a little angel hairs coming off there. As Pete is here, are you going to be doing a captive ring or not? Absolutely, I'm not doing a captive ring. Absolutely, 100% not doing a captive ring. There we go. So now we can sand that up. Sand up the outside, sand up the inside. And I'm going to use my little Simon Hope sander for the inside. I've got a one inch. Oh, you can see there. This one inch uh, Simon Hope sander. And I've used two inch, a piece of two inch paper. And what I've done is I've just snipped the edges. So it kind of comes over the edge. Robert from Hodgepodge is saying that you've got such sweet terms of endearment, you two, meaning you and, you and Jamie, Brian. We have, yeah. JP's asking, is uh, Brian wearing his jockey outfit? Yep. My racing colours. <laughs> Different than a tutu, I suppose. Yeah. Let me just get this extractor out a bit. Well, we all have our quirky things, don't we? What's yours then, Joe? Come on, tell us. <laughs> now that would be telling. <laughs> concentrate, boys. Concentrate. Is it leather or something? <laughs> I could be wearing the tutu right now, for all you know. You could so the, be. So the, the <laughs> idea of putting a little slits in the paper is it actually folds over the edge, look, as you're turning, as you're sanding, and you get a much better feel for down in the bottom of the cup. That's nearly pretty good in there already. And it also works for treating on the outside. This is 120 grit paper we're using. We'll go up to 240 and then we'll use some uh, of the magic paste. <laughs> Paul Finley, returning at home, has just joined us. Good afternoon. Hi, Paul. Hi, pa Hi Paul. That's my uh, Paul from the Ulster Wood Turning. <laughs> Brian, uh, Pete says. Cool. Paul um, has Scott's got a nice channel. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'll just go make a, a little announcement there. Paul has got a channel. Um, I wonder, Mark, could you look that up and maybe stick, his, stick a link, stick a link yeah, in, the, in the chat there so the other people can find him. He's got a few subscribers now. He's kind of just getting getting into the way of doing videos. There's a few videos up. Um, some of them might be a bit long, but... Uh, we're before, I do that, before I do yes, that link, can I just chuck the link in for Scott's live this evening? Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, of course you can. Pete Twisted Trees yeah. just said, thank you, Brian, for not doing a captive ring. I will oh, give well, you a Pete. thumbs up and attempt to subscribe again. Uh, good man, Pete. Win, you get in there, boy. <laughs> Excellent. Let's have a look at that and see if we've got any 
radio marks or anything in there? Nope. Perfect. Rex B is okay. asking you a question. Have you yes, done right. any large platters on videos? Uh, no. Next week's project then. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I could actually because I've got a nice, I think it's, a, it's either a 12 or a 14 inch piece of sycamore in next door. That I might be able to do a platter with. I can do that. Would you Richard. like some colour with it? Richard RJK Spinning Word says good afternoon, Brian, and everybody else. Berms good afternoon, everybody. Richard. Thanks for coming in. Hi, Richard. There's the link for Paul Finley's channel. So oh, if you could go over and give that give Paul a little bit of a little bit of a boost there, guys, and encourage him. Um, he's kind of just getting into this um, doing live videos and stuff. And that would be another one for us to watch. I would appreciate that. So that should be enough, I think, with the 240. I've just subbed for you there, Paul. Excellent, Mark. Thank you. So we'll get some sandy sealer on that. The live. A little bit of sandy Design, sealer. Brian, Designer Makes asking you, what inspired you to start your channel? Um, <laughs> that's a strange, that's a hard question. It, it, it wasn't really, I wasn't really inspired to start a channel. I used to have a YouTube channel, um, which I did, which was my uh, horsemanship channel. Because I'm a horsemanship instructor, first and foremost, this is a secondary hobby. Um, so I had a channel for that, but I didn't utilize it very much. Because it, basically it's outdoors and it's kind of hard to film and all that kind of stuff. Um, so when I started doing wood turning, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just stick a camera up and I'll just record what I'm doing. And then I can look back on it in years to come and say, oh, I've improved a whole lot. Or, Boy, I'm not getting any better. <laughs> You know, so um, that's really that was really the purpose of setting it up. But then um, I decided I would try one of these live sessions, and I like it. <laughs> uh, let me go here. I like doing live sessions. It's really nice. It's a, the interacting with you people is excellent. I love it. Um, so it's just kind of like a bug now, and I just want to keep doing it. That's I'll go cool. back to that camera again. Yeah, that's good to so, hear that. So it just kind of got under my skin a little bit. And uh, uh, Steve from SK Crafts had uh, sort of three live sessions a week. Uh, was it two live sessions or three? I can't remember. Three, I think. And because oh, he went yeah, back. He was doing three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, it, when we were on lockdown. So when he had to go back to work. Yeah, poor soul, he had to go back to work. It's a tragedy. Mm -hmm. These uh, people have to work. But there you go. Um, I kind of took over the, the Thursday slot. <coughs> and it's kind of become my own slot now. So I'll be here every Thursday, guys, doing a little something. Uh, a big project or a little project. Uh, and just to try and educate and entertain you and me. Because mostly it's about education for myself. I try and pick something that I haven't done before or that I'm not very good at. So Rex B asked, what is the minimum, minimum internet speed capability you need to broadcast? His club is considering oh. doing that for a meeting. You really want at least about four megabits per second? Yeah, four or minimum? five, I would say, yeah. Faster you four, can get, the better. The, the faster upload, the better. But so uh, I currently push out nine. I think Brian's probably pushing about eight or nine. Yeah, no, no, six point five normally is my Next average. Six point five seven. Mine's um, nine, Wayne, I think. But Wayne's is, uh, Wayne the wood turners is much less than that, guys. And he's Wayne. he's managing. He gets you, you can see sometimes in his lives that the pictures are a little bit pixelated and stuff. He's lucky <laughs> if he gets one. Yeah, yeah. He, he lives much further out. <laughs> he seems to live much further out in the countryside than I do. Brent B. Cross in. Hi, Brent. Hello, Brent. But I'm cu currently running this um, this live feed through OBS, that's controlling the cameras, uh, via computer, which is working on a Wi-Fi signal to my house, 
which is 10, 15 yards away. Um, so that sometimes causes a little issue. That's all so I do. I, my wife, my Wi-Fi is up here in the flat, and my PC is downstairs in the workshop, and yeah. it runs off Wi-Fi. So I was talking to the man who makes Joshua great yesterday. Is that top upside down, is it? I'll turn that right. We can't see it. Oh, my goodness. You have to show it to the camera or it doesn't work. Other way. Other way. <laughs> there we go. Oh, was that upside down, was it that way? That's right now. Up there, up there. Ah, oh, to hell. You get the idea. Um, and he, his suggestion to me was when you use Yorkshire grit, you put, put plenty on. Uh, that's a good sales pitch. <laughs> but use enough and then keep the same piece of cloth and stay on it for three minutes. Yep. Uh, because uh, I know the figures might be wrong here, but uh, the grit that's in it is at 70 microns. I think that's what he said. And then as you're working it here, it'll actually degrade and go down to about 10 microns. So that's 15, so I think he said. It's a thing now, Mark. Don't you put that on me. You're, oh. You are the designated, you're the you're designated. designated singer <laughs> for this live, <laughs> lady. Yeah, All that, right. partner of the grid. Okay. You're, you're. All right, then. And so you're turning by Barry is in. Be soft as your face. With live brown. Yorkshire gritty. There you go. She Join brings a lot better than I'm. Yeah. Ben, ben, ben Jammin's in. Hi, Ben. Hi, ben. So that's about three minutes worth of working there. You can actually feel the grit disappearing as you as you work. It's not disappearing, but it's getting less gritty, if you like. So now, I was told to, I was told to use the grit like Joe needs a holiday. That's it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because <laughs> <laughs> Joe needs a holiday. So turn the speed up now, and with just with light pressure on your cloth now, because all you're trying to do now. Is make sure there's no excess on the surface so that piece of cloth is coming off fairly clean let me just do the inside quickly yep it's coming off Not, fairly clean and also and the now you just want to generate a little bit of heat to set the wax not melt it set it if you use too much pressure that'll melt the wax and it'll disappear into the wood you just want to set it Douglas Mullen yeah. says, hashtag holiday for Joe. Hashtag oh, holiday yeah. for Joe. So that's the grip bit done. And because it's a goblet, and the first thing people do when they see a goblet is they pick it up. I'm going to use uh, Hampshire Sheen micro crystalline wax because that uh, resists the fingerprints better. It must have a tougher finish or something. Don't ask me the physics. I have no idea how the physics work. So it, as with um, all... Good, good afternoon to, my, um, to Wood Turning by Barry. Yes. Wood Turning yeah, by we Barry. Said we said we that. Said that yeah. Am I Joe, the are you, are you, are you awake? Joe, 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 give yourself a shake there. I don't think you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been singing what Joe expects. Oh, I saw That's you what we right thought. You were, you That's why we sleep. thought you weren't awake. You thought you were singing in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, as with all sort of um, Hampshire Sheen products, uh, a little is more. Don't go mad slapping this stuff on. Just put a little tiny bit on and then work it. And then you can add more. If you put too much on to start, we'll just get streaks. Rex B wants wants to know what wax finish do you like the most, Brian? Do you put a finish on top of the microcrystalline? Uh, this is the finish. This is the finish. The microcrystalline is the finish. I'm not putting anything else on top of this. If it's a, for a decorative piece, <coughs> I use the high gloss wax. If it's for something that's going to be handled, I use the microcrystalline. There we go, that's that done. I'm going to move this lathe back into the straight position now. Or I don't need it turned anymore. There we go. <coughs> so that's the cup done, guys. It's not too bad. 
let's go back to that just for a minute. Oh, it and how thin are the walls there, Brian, that you've got them down to? Right, so that's about, uh, oh. I don't know. I don't know, Two but mil. I can measure. Nah, it's good. Mm -hmm. I know it's maybe three, sorry. Um, if we could find the caliper <laughs> things. There you go. So there's the calipers. And there's my very nears. Three mil. So the walls are three mil from here all the way down to about there, and then it starts to get bottom out into the bottom, and it gets slightly thicker there, probably about four mil at the bottom. And that's perfect for my liking. Dave from Movadi Makers going back to work says bye to everybody. Bye bye, David. So did next we ask the question from Rex? Bye. Yes. Uh, which question was it from Rex? At the of keys joined. Yeah. Of keys just joined. So now, to, in order to give us a little bit of support, that's the wrong thing. What are you doing that for? I'm going to use a tennis ball. Put the tennis ball in there. Bring up the tailstock. And I'm just going to. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on this because if you put pressure downwards, you're just liable to bend the stem. So you just want enough there just to hold this and try to stop it vibrating. Mind you, in this example, I am not going to go too thin anyway. So change tool rest. I just want a small tool rest now. You go to the side camera. Brian, Paul Finley is just saying that he couldn't get the watermark off. I take it he means the streamyard watermark without paying for it. Oh, the That's stream true, yard. Paul, you can't. All oh, right, yeah. Paul, yeah. So uh, I thought he was talking about Formula. Um, yeah, Paul, the, oh, the stream yard logo that's up in the top right-hand corner of the screen stays there. Um, unless you pay. Uh, unless you pay. But if you're not going to be streaming more than sort of 10 hours a month or something, don't pay. Just live with a little logo. I'm not doing any harm. I wouldn't be paying for it anyway. We're all used so, to seeing it. We all pretty much ignore the logo. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just kind of there, isn't it? <laughs> Sidley 61's just popped in. Hello, Sidley. So now I'm just um, going to kind of... Hi, Sidley. Hi, Sidley. Ben jamin has got a very important question. He'd like to know, does the tennis ball have a label? Uh, no. <sighs> well, you need to address that with a label machine. <laughs> That's a good. Well, Ben, hmm. Ben, the other thing is, if if he did have a green screen, as you suggest, then we wouldn't see the tennis ball, probably, but we certainly wouldn't see Brian. Rex, has got a question. Do you do for the same finish here, Worms? Yes. Sorry, give me that again. Yes, we do. Then do we do, do, the, do the earworms do the same finishes? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Same process. Sand it, seal it, grit it, wax it. Sometimes don't see, don't seal it because we forget. So we mark it on the lid. That's why there's a label on the lid. Lawrence, oh. Jeff. Uh, today I received the Oxy Grit and other Oxy products, at least in English language. At last I ordered some other products were in German language. Well, to be fair, Yorkshire Grit uh, only does English unless the um, supplier um, opts to put other language in, in the we'll box. Stop that. Um, <laughs> Dave, Dave Woodworks asking. Why does he use a tennis ball and not a squeaky toy strawberry? Because I haven't got a squeaky <laughs> toy strawberry. If you want to uh, come over, Jamie, I'll stick you in the end of the cup. <laughs> it's a strawberry. You need to be a big Hashtag cup. Streep. <laughs> squeaky toy strawberry for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just roughing this out, guys, to try and get down to somewhere where I can 
use my spindle gauge. You could be using any tool for this, I suppose. 3 8 ball gauge. <laughs> 3 8 ball gauge. That's what I'm using there, 3 8 ball gauge. That's exactly what that is. Skew chisel. JP says, you haven't got a squeaky toy strawberry? Off to Amazon I go. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. <laughs> That's yeah. a shit. Uh -oh. that, that was <laughs> almost a certainty. JP, if you need his address, I've got it. You be careful there, mister. <laughs> <laughs> because I've got yours. Uh-oh. There may be trouble ahead. <laughs> Talking of heads, Robert from okay. HodgePodge Good, Woodworks yeah. says JP is going to wake up with a horse head in his head <laughs> if he doesn't mm -hmm. leave Brian alone. That's all right, Brian. JP says he's, he's already got your address. Oh, he has right enough. Um... Well, everyone's got mine, so I can't make any threats. Yeah, I've seen. Yeah. My, uh, my address is kind of public anyway, guys, because I, have, I run a business through it, so. You kind of have to be public then. Ah. My tourist is just a tiny little bit high there. I'm going to stop that and drop this tourist a little bit. And if Terry starts, I've got Terry's address. Oh, uh, definitely trouble at Mill now. Yes, somewhere in Wales, Dale thinks. <laughs> it's not. JP <laughs> says, I need his address. Bear with. What is JP saying now? Nothing. Don't you worry about it. I need his address, Mark. Just look up my Facebook page. It's on there, Jimmy. Yeah, but it's on your person. <laughs> Funnier if I send it to him. That would be him. Yeah. I get there quicker as well. You've yeah. got 42 people watching, Brian. Oh, amazing. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate you guys coming in. So now we're just going to try and do a little transition between the cup and then into the stem. And I tend to leave a little um, collar almost, I suppose you would call it. So I don't know if you can't, you can't really see that. I need to see if really the other camera works, it might. I really need to get that overhead camera back on. Let me just try that overhead camera, guys. Sorry. Give me a second. Yeah, it worked temporarily, didn't it? Well, it came on at the beginning, but now it's just. They just kind of carved again. So, oh, there's Mike. There you go. So, I, I tend to try and leave a little collar just here. So, we're coming off of here, and then there's just a tiny little ridge, and then we're back into a cove then. Like a transition. <laughs> it just kind of highlights the transition between cup and stem, is all it does. But I think it adds to the effect. There you go, JP. You should have that now. <laughs> oh, no. What have you done to me, Mark? So now I'm just going to put a little bit of a decoration in here. On the stem. Just so it's not quite plain. Chris so, from Bailey Woodworks is in. Hi, Chris. So oh, with Chris. all spindle work, it's just kind of beads and coves, <laughs> isn't it? We'll just roll a little bead there. Give himself a little bit of room there. And yes, everybody, if you can hear in the background, that is Terry's clock ticking in the background. The My loudest clock. clock. It's the loudest clock in the world. It's about 1870, and it is a regulator clock, and it's lovely. Right. It's 1870? Is that not 1710? <coughs> 1870. No, it's only 1348. Years ago. For now, for now. For now, for now. 
That's right. For for now. Not, can you hear my clock ticking? That was yep. a timeless. That was a timeless joke. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry, it's funny. Pacemaker. I don't have one. Excuse me. So now I'm just and standing the stem out a little bit. Terry's clock has to be loud so you can hear it over the sheep. Ba ha ha. Ba ha ha. Devon well, sheep you... are just as good as well sheep. About the Cornish ones, though. they all look the same. So the same principles apply every every time you do a cut, anchor, bevel, cut. What size are you going to take that down to, Brian? Like uh, just, about, ju just about where it is now. <laughs> it's not going to get much thinner. I'm just trying to tidy it up here. Um, I'm not uh, in the game of making very thin stem goblets. So I'm just taking a little tiny feathery because I don't know how well you guys can see that. That's yeah, fine. Hmm. I could get it in a little bit closer if you wanted to. That'll do. That's good there. So we'll right. just take whoa, some whoa, whoa, whoa. No, whoa, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. Stop. Sand that piece before you take any more off. Sand the bit of a stem that you've yes, done yes. Yes, yes. before you take any more off. I got it. Yep. I've got it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. So 120. A little bit 120. Get turn the speed down a little bit. So the idea of that, guys, is so as we don't uh, have to come back and re-sand this when we've got less timber down at the bottom and we have less stability. That's the reason for that. Pete, the answer to your question is even more nervous because the Welsh ones are used to it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a question for one of those shows where they give you the answer first and then ask you what the question was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to know what the question was. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm reading it. I, I, I know what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> and it was obviously rude. Pete, it's only the afternoon. So there we go. That's, uh, that's actually 240 sandpaper I've just used there. Yeah, Ben, it's a bit, a bit weird. Uh, is that me? Just, or, is that is that me or Pete? Uh, he's talking about? Uh, me. No, he's talking. Just, just, just a little <laughs> bit creepy. <laughs> a little bit of sanding seal up. Oh no! Oh. Nice. Yeah, what well, your question did come up, Scott, but we we were kind of glossing over it. Scott wanted oh, to no. know, are we sure it's the clock and not the sheep's knees knocking? Oh, Jesus. This is getting worse. Ellie wants to know a proper question. Ellie Good says, girl, Ellie. are you, are you self-taught, Brian? Um, basically, yes. I've had one lesson um, from uh, Martin, Martin Saban Smith. I had one virtual lesson from him. I've had a couple of little um, lessons from uh, Wayne the Woodturner and uh, Mark and Terry uh, have helped me out on little hangouts that we do sometimes. So I've had a little bit of instruction, um, but nothing uh, personal hands-on like standing beside another turner. So I just kind of watched some YouTube videos and got stuck in. And it seems to be working. Although I'm pretty forgetful, as Mark will attest. Like, not forget to change cameras and forget to sand bits when I'm supposed to sand them. Right, let's take a bit more over here. And make Rick the stem B's a little got bit a question. 
Um, Go ahead. Aaron, he, he says, are any of your kids, grandkids, started learning to wood turn? Uh, for all no. you, my granddaughter is doing pens 10 years old. I'm very proud of her. I think younger That's people brilliant. need to get more involved, don't they? It's an, old, an older, not old, an older person's thing. It's, yeah, it seems to be currently um, mainly, uh, if you look at the club structure in the country, <laughs> the mainstay of clubs are, are old, retired people like myself, or older. No, I've never called myself old. I'm older. Um, I'm older than Mark yeah, and Joe, but I'm, not as, but I'm not as old as Terry. <laughs> But think, that, that's, uh, that seems to be the mainstay of clubs. I think clubs need to realise that they need to be attractive to the youth because otherwise they'll just die out. Yeah. Yep. They will that's not survive you. unless they get younger people in and encourage them. And it's, I think too often a youngster turns up at a club and wants to do it and they're mm. discouraged because the older generation feels threatened by the youngsters and it's the wrong attitude. It's they need it, to encourage the kids into this craft or it'll just die off. And then they've got nobody to blame but themselves. Yeah, agreed. Absolutely, 100% agree. Alf's asking every, the question. Every... Alf wants to know if that that uh, eucalyptus smells when turning? No. Whatever this... Is it still whatever not this... turning? Smell it. No, it's not. There's, there's no it's smell, not. no eucalyptus Cooked smell. It. Nothing. It's just... I don't, think, I don't think it does. I've never smelled it. Yeah. Hodgepodge is saying, don't worry, you guys. JP, <laughs> Seth and I will carry on the tradition when you all, all you are gone. Would you listen to him? Hey, hey. And Ellie is, oh. Ellie is saying she's 40, she, uh, she's about 40 years younger than most of the people at my club. What Good girl, Ellie. In. You, you, Hi, you stick in there. Hi, Paul. Hi, oh, Paul. Richard RJK Spinningwood's got a good idea. He says he was thinking the other day there are men's sheds, women's sheds, but there should really be kids' sheds. Yes. Start one. Start one. Yeah. Yeah. Approach local cadet forces, army cadets, air cadets, sea cadets, boys clubs. Youth clubs, children's centres, approach all those sort of places and see if there's any interest. Do some demonstrations, show them what you can do, show them how much fun it can be. And pick their arms and legs up afterwards. <laughs> yeah, my granddaughter, she's 13 now. She did do some turning, she was about 10, 12, 10, between 10 and 12. But other things, Xboxes and things, take away. That's a draw. If you could do it on an Xbox, I'd do it. Yeah. Um, Brian, there's a message from JP. It says, laugh out loud, strawberry on its way. <laughs> strawberry on its way. <laughs> yeah, there any. <laughs> RJK Spinningwood says, can you imagine the insurance? But that's what the AWGP is there for. Mm. If you're a member of the AWGP and you start up a club aimed at kids, they will help you with the insurance. That's what they're there for. Brian, have you muted? Can't hear you, Brian. Uh, are we st are, are we, is everybody still there? Yeah, yeah we're still there now. You went quiet. 
my uh, my microphone just kind of calved there. I don't know what happened. Hope we don't have to plug it in. Sorry, guys. Check your belt on your trousers. Everything's going wrong. You never know. <laughs> I just round it off and bring that into there. Too much. That'll do. That's a note. So that's that. And then the part off about there somewhere. Radar saying he turned 46 yesterday. Turned 46 what, Radar? Goblets or years? That's young, mind. That is young. You've gone again, Brian. Your sound's gone again, Brian. Yeah, Pat, perhaps the battery's going flat or something. So, people in the chat, Brian is now sanding with a 120 grit paper. Whispering Ted Low here. Yes. <laughs> He's about to take about to take the shot at the middle non cafted ring. Now he's Payback, standing Brian. back in his belt. Well, no sound, Brian. He's even disappeared off the picture as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's right yeah we can hear you yes. now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes, yes, we can hear you. No, nobody can hear me. Oh, we can hear you. Yes, we can. Yep. We can hear you. Um... Happy birthday for yesterday, Rada. By the way, just the caveat: JP Woodwork is only thirty-one subs off eight thousand when he's going to do a giveaway. So, on the one gets to ten thousand. JP, chuck your link in. The if anybody's not subscribed to JP Woodwork, he would appreciate it. That's if they can hear us, of course, because he might have switched it all off. Oh, our our, our um, audio should still be going out. Mm. No, Brian's got no audio and he can't fix it. Oh, well. Anybody read sign language? Doesn't look like he can hear us either, that's the thing. How's that, guys? Is that any better? Yeah, that's better. Yes. Now we can hear you. You can hear me now. Mm. Yep. I have nice no clear. idea what's on there, guys. No idea. You've um, got a gremlin somewhere. I have got a gremlin today. Got a leprechaun. A lot With green smoke. <laughs> With a green smoke. Mmm. The chat could Paul. hear us, but not you. Thank you for the donation, Paul. Very much appreciated. Um, Brian, can I just tell everybody where we're up to so far with my... Yes, mate, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Right, the um, Just Giving page for the charity thing I did Monday night currently stands at £1,276. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Fabulous. Keeping the page open until... Keeping the page open until um, tomorrow night during Steve's live, and I'll make the I'll make the donation from the giving page over to Sepsis Trust during Steve's live. And for those that didn't see it, you've got to see the video as he did it wearing a pink tutu. Am I back with you guys again? Am I have I lost you again? Yeah, we no, you come back there. again. Then we're still there. But you have been dropping in and out, so it's something wrong. We can't hear you now. Can't hear the lights. That's the giveaway, isn't it? Yeah. Not hearing the um, The, the, the um, stream yard keeps going to mute. All right. I don't know why it's doing that, but that's twice it's done it now. The, the microphone button's not stuck, is it? 
No, no. Because no. you, you can mute from the microphone thing. And I know. I just a, press, yeah. press the side. Yeah, I know. It's not. No, I haven't touched it. <laughs> oh, no. I'm back anyway. So sorry about yeah. the technical difficulties today, guys. I will be having an investigation into that as soon as this is over. How are we doing for time? Ten past two. No, 65 minutes you've been, yeah. It's just six minutes past two. So just the last little bit of uh, 240 grit here just to get this kind of nicely sanded. Happy birthday, Radar. Gerard saying, saying I should uh, auction off a tutu, but then I wouldn't have my tutu. And he likes to That's wear it in the evenings true. and weekends. <laughs> Maybe he does. Are you getting afraid you live near Like I said, how do you anybody, know I'm not wearing it now? Anybody live near Bude in Cornwall, then if you go down there at seven o'clock in the evening, Mark dances down the street to the beach in his tutu. <laughs> oh, that vision. That's a, <laughs> that, video to follow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's an image I can't get rid of now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amy's in. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. How are you doing, girl? Hello, Amy. Right. Sanding sealer. Hi, Amy. Amy's just woken up. Amy's just woken up. She's in Australia. Right. Yeah, I know. She lives in Australia. <laughs> She's just awake. Breakfast time in Australia. No, they're ahead out there. So is it like through the night? Late at night. Yeah. David from the name of sure, yes. David oh, from yeah. Web Foot Resin and Wood Creations is saying good morning. Morning, David. Yeah, Web Foot okay. Creations. Why can we not find your channel, um, David? It's probably it's. It, I've been looking at it. It's probably the fact that the URL hasn't changed over from is from David Eisenhower. So. All right. Okay. It's you know so, he's, he's he's accessed it and YouTube hasn't changed it over yet. It sometimes takes a little bit of time. Take a little while, yeah. It's not instant. So. Right, there we go. So now, Josh will get again. Get on, Mark, your turn. Uh, uh, Steady yourself now. Well, Steady no, yourself. I haven't, even, to do it again. I haven't <laughs> even got it on yet, Joe. Jeez, give me a minute. <laughs> Turn the speed Amy's down to 500. Happy birthday to, say, to Sid's repurposing. Um, so it must be Sid's uh, birthday today. Happy birthday! It's another birthday, isn't it? Yeah. Happy birthday, Sid, as well. Happy His birthday, radar. Sid. Right, sing then, one of you. Matt can sing Happy Birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, 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 Sid. Happy birthday to you, Sid. And radar. And Sid and radar. Very good, guys. So, oh, yes, am I did. singing this gritty song? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'm gritting now, and so you better. That feel pity can be soft as your face. Ooh. We've lived, bro. Ooh. You're Ooh. a gritty. Let's hurry up, Mark, doing a howling in the background. Right. Here is the link for Webfoot Resin and Wood Creations. Ah. How did you get it? Because he sent it to me. Ah, you... Right, walk it on then, that's it. So, don't it. Thank Thank you so we can get in there and sub to it. <laughs> yeah. Any, for anybody who's not already subbed, jump in there and sub to... David, he supports this channel and many other word turning channels. He does indeed. Right, your regret. What comes after your regret? Hampshire Sheen. Hampshire Sheen. Here we go from the Grit and Sheen range. There we go. Hampshire Sheen. Food and toy safe. Micro crystalline wax. And you can put it on when it's turning. It makes no difference. Just well don't done, apply too much pressure. Going to give the cup a little bit extra because it's well supported there. <laughs> And we're nearly done, guys. I've kept you long enough. 
Oh, it's only ten pounds. That's good because I've got to go to the doctor soon. <laughs> Have a tutu fitting. No diabetic review. Oh yeah. <laughs> how's your how's your sugars this morning, Mark? Don't Better ask. than they were. Oh, you don't have oh. cheese. Not good. They were, they were quite low yeah, last night, weren't they, Mark? Uh, no, they were quite. They were quite high. <laughs> quite high last night, yeah. Well, they were under, under a hundred. Twenty twenty seven point eight. I peaked at last night. That's. I don't. No, I don't. Yeah, I claim to understand how how that works, but um, the bigger the number, seven. the worse it is. Yeah. Aye. Yeah, yeah. It should be seven. It should be between four and seven. So there we are, guys. That's that. Uh, Mark's lucky if he gets under 10. Just a matter of parting off now to remove the said bottle. Oh, that's quite a. Uh... Amy would like to know could you say the word cow, please, just to amuse her? Cow. And what again? about What about cow? What about cheeseburger? That was that was what the Americans when I was in America, the Americans wanted me to say cheeseburger all the time because they felt mm. it was quite funny. I have no idea why. Can you say curly whirly? Curly whirly. And the last one, can you say there's been a meltdown? No, 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 Mark. You've got that statement wrong. You said it's there's been another murder <laughs> with a curly whirly. There's been another mother. Murder. Murder. <laughs> As we say that down here in the West Marsh. Country, we know somewhere colder. Point north. Douglas Mung has got a serious question. Would the Never. Mic crys crys crystalline wax be okay for the inside of a fruit bowl? Yes, absolutely. Yes, it would. yes, it's toy and food safe. He's been melted by a cheeseburger holding a curly whirly. And the cow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's all I can oh say. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's all I can say. Can we throw in an okay the new? No, you can't. Why not? <gasps> Amy said, by Larku. <laughs> What did she say? Yeah. You and I are going to fall out, Amy. Yeah, no, we're not. Chris, the cake's lovely, thank what, you. What was I looking for there? I was looking for this. Cake? More cake? I didn't eat too much cake, stuff. but it was... Did you, did you get cake free, again? Wasn't it? I got a whole sugar-free lemon drizzle cake from the Cornish Maid. Now you're just showing off. It still do you any good it with sugars that high. JP, JP wants you to like say... Can you say, yeah. can, can Brian say purple burglar alarm? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to sand. Oh, I better put some sandpaper on that. That'd be a good plan. A little bit of sandpaper. Chris I'm just going to sand off the it's, foot. It's a bit lit, knit to knit. Aye. It's a bro brick can I, like neck to the neck. Can I, can I just point out, people, that this is. Borderline racism. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to take the Mickeyism. <laughs> oh. <No. laughs> I agree. Brian wouldn't be offended by it. If he was, we'd do it even more. Yep. JP says, try Brian. Try Brian. Don't be a quitter. Lol. <laughs> What, what does Jimmy want me to say now? Uh, purple burglar alarm. I just thought I'd get you. I just thought I'd get you guys to say it again. Now. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> oh. I just says he thought Brian was Irish. <laughs> no, no, he lives in oh, Ireland. Oh, steady, Scottish yourself. Irishman. <laughs> steady, don't, steady. Don't upset him. Don't upset him, Douglas. That's it. For, the, for my next live, there's a Scottish flag going on that back wall. That's enough of that nonsense. <laughs> there we go, guys. We're done. So, a little bit on the bottom would just let me... I'll just show you this. So, there we go. Little goblet. 
Very nice. With a, sim with a simple little decoration in the middle of the stem. All it out. Just repeat that was a And it's got a very room. fine, uh, I made the base as fine as I could. So when it stands very up good. on its own, it's, uh, we'll do that. Oh, that's not it. No, we'll just show it now, it'll be fine. There it is there. That's lovely. I, mean, I, I, I did make one, I did, because because I because I, I don't like to jump in and do things just off the cuff. That's the one I did earlier. So this is one for today, and that's uh, get over here, over there. Very nice. Very nice. Good job. Only another six to, oops, another six to go. You're muted again, Brian. You're muted. Muted. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Brian, can't hear you. Can't hear you. He's going to bring us in, though. He's going to bring us in. There we are. Can't hear you. Brian says bye, everybody. Yeah, bye, bye everyone. everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.